What's up world? This is Giovanni again. And today is a very special episode because last week I got to attend DEF CON. DEF CON! DEF CON! <laughs> so today is a very special episode because I'm bringing you the top five dopest talks, at least from my perspective. Stay tuned. So plain and simple, if you've never heard of DEF CON before, first off, get out from under that rock. But more importantly, DEF CON is the premier conference for hackers on this planet. And it happens every year, happens in Vegas, and it's been happening for a long time now. Have you ever been to a party before where everybody there, A, was a hacker, but then B, you had some people on this side of the party that are soldering circuit boards and components on the circuit boards. And then this people in the back of the room are all programming on the Apple II. And then these people in this side of the room, they're building computers. And have you ever been to a party like that? No, you haven't been, I doubt it. And this year, what I did is I opened up the actual like conference book that they give you. And on the very first inside cover is the person the Dark Tangent, who is the founder of DEF CON and Black Hat. But in the first paragraph, he talks about the purpose of DEF CON. And I love the way he phrases it because he says it was loosely, he basically says that DEF CON was purposed with re-energizing information security professionals. And that just spoke to me so much. And not to mention, DEF CON has the dopest graphic artists I've ever seen for any conference. All of their graphic design work is A1 top notch. Look at this stuff. Just look at, just look at the artistry in these graphic designs. But now I'm tickling my own fancy. So let's get down to business. Here are the top five talks from Giovanni's perspective from this year's DEF CON. And you owe it to yourself to go through all of the talks, not just these five, but I'll give you the links to the slides down below if you're interested. So the first talk that I want to talk about was entitled Popping a Smart Gun. And it is exactly what it sounds like. So you know these days we have these things known as smart guns and these things have smart technology in it, but that's just some type of marketing jargon to convey the idea that this is not a conventional gun. That was a fly. So what the presenter did is he took a certain model gun and this gun had the capability in which it would enable a, the user of the gun to have a watch on. And that watch would be able to keep track of the proximity from the gun itself. So this can help in terms of only the person wearing the wristwatch can like shoot the gun and et cetera, et cetera, right? So that's the smart technology piece. But what he did is interesting. He intercepts the communication between the gun and the smartwatch. And he starts literally fuzzing and playing around with that communication protocol. And if you read the working paper that he's written on it, this is not the first time he's done this type of thing. Look at his slides and read his working paper and look at exactly how he pops this smart gun. Interesting. So the next talk I want to talk about is entitled Hacking Smart Contracts. And if you're not familiar with blockchain, A, you should check out my video on the origin of blockchain. And B, this may be a little nebulous to you because you have to understand what a smart contract is first in order to understand why hacking is important. But anyways, from a high level perspective, you have this notion of a blockchain, which enables this decentralized environment that doesn't require trust. So you've heard of Bitcoin, right? Blockchain is what enables that. So in this decentralized trustless environment, the moment that these arbitrary predefined stipulations are met, that's when the smart contract kicks off its logic, basically. So one of many popular platforms in this whole ecosystem is known as Ethereum. And Ethereum enables this usage of these smart contracts. 
So what the presenter does is he, first off, he starts talking about how this ecosystem is so new that the proper development tools and the proper auditing tools for this ecosystem damn near don't exist so throughout the whole talk he points out different ways that these smart contracts can be exploited because when people are writing these smart contracts they don't have access to these really mature auditing tools so like today if you're writing software there's a plethora of auditing tools for you to make sure that you're writing your code securely etc etc but in this cryptocurrency blockchain ecosystem it just doesn't exist yet so what the presenter does in many ways is he shows how you can exploit ethereum's solidity platform through different means and this solidity platform is what enables you to be able to build or develop these smart contract applications even if you don't have that low level blockchain knowledge, you can still follow along in the presentation and get the gist of what the presenter is actually showing. So do yourself a favor, look at the slides from the presentation and kind of do some background exploration on blockchain and see why this stuff is important. Because showing how this stuff is exploitable, just like everything else is really, it enables one to really get a good grasp on what the future may look like for these blockchain based applications, which is just interesting in itself. So the third talk that I want to talk about today, because you missed DEF CON, is entitled Hacking the Apple Watch. And it is exactly what it sounds like. So first off, this is a very low level programming language based presentation because in many of the slides, he shows actual code up there. So if you look at the slides, you're able to see programmatically how hacking an Apple Watch application can be. Even if it's not useful to you, keep in mind the Watch OS ecosystem is still budding. It's still fairly new to the world. Whether you're black hat or not, understanding how these Watch OS applications can be exploited really helps you A, harden what you're trying to do and maybe even show you a different light in terms of what the real ecosystem for the watch os applications actually is like so the fourth talk that i want to talk about today was entitled evading next generation antivirus using artificial intelligence so evading next gen av using ai interesting title long-winded too and this is a budding space in information security right now but what the presenter does is he first off gives an overview of what AI can be defined as nowadays because it is very nebulous and many people argue it doesn't exist yet. Some people argue artificial stupidity doesn't even exist, let alone artificial intelligence, but that's besides the point. So what the presenter does is he shows how a black hat actor can disturb a machine learning model in such a way where the disturbance is imperceivable to the human senses, but it enables the machine learning model to perform incorrectly. And think about that, because we as humans, when it comes to AI, we train these systems. We decide how these systems should be trained in some way. And then we kind of let the model loose after it does some type of training on it. Because we as the human engineers kind of decide how this thing is supposed to learn, at least from a high level perspective, our senses and our intuition throughout that process is important. So if a black hat actor can disturb a machine learning model in such a way where I can't even perceive it as the machine learning expert, thus enabling the model to perform incorrectly, that's a huge problem because now it becomes a huge task for me to validate continuously that my model is not disturbed. Validating the model can simply just be me running it over and over to ensure that it's getting the right type of answers. So now I'm not only maintaining that model, but I'm also continuously trying to validate that it hasn't been disturbed. So this just brings about a different attack surface for black hats, honestly. And when you think about the ramifications here, 
a lot of today's technology has some type of AI slash ML built into it. So if I put my black hat on, and I look around me and I notice that a lot of these systems in today's world are using some rudimentary or advanced form of AI slash ML. Now that brings about a whole set of attack surfaces and attack vectors that I can now take advantage of. I'd like to submit that this budding area of exploiting machine learning AI models is going to bring about an entire new subfield of information security where the information security professional is going to have to have some type of ML AI understanding in order to mitigate against it properly. Or it's going to make it so that these InfoSec teams are going to have to start hiring these ML AI experts to help them mitigate against these type of attacks. Because the more and more we progress, the more and more technology is going to be taken advantage of these data science, ML, and AI type of solutions. Now, the fifth talk that I want to talk about, and this is in no way exhaustive, and this is definitely in no way ranked in any specific order. These are just five that I really thought were cool. If it was up to me, I'd talk to you about every single talk that was there, but you don't want to sit through a video that long. So the fifth and final presentation I want to talk about today was entitled See No Evil, Hear No Evil. So what this presenter does in this presentation is he shows how by using sound and lasers and proximity sensors, etc., one can disturb a physical system. In one instance, the presenter shows if there's a drone flying around you, if you were to strap certain sensors on a helmet for yourself and point it or simply come in close proximity with the drone, you can enable the drone to issue incorrect readings from the rotors, thus making it become imbalanced and eventually crashing. In many of the cases, these physical attack methods may require close proximity, but it is what it is. Now granted, I have to give an ode to past DEF CON talks. This is not the first talk that has talked about disturbing systems with physical attack methods but this is a video on DEF CON 25 at the end of the day. If you have never been to DEF CON, here's the URL. Make sure to go at least one time. It will change your life, I promise you. There's too much to do there. And the people are a certain type of people that you will never encounter anywhere else in those numbers. If you went to DEF CON this year, let me know in the comments. Tell me what your top five talks were and why. As always, I appreciate you watching my videos, especially this special one on DEF CON 25. You can always find me on social media, at Giovanni, and I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching.